Hello and welcome back to Bold TV. I'm David Grasso. Let's talk about President Biden's American Jobs Plan. The Biden administration presented a $2 trillion infrastructure plan as a way to get Americans back to work while fixing our crumbling roads, bridges, and public transportation. But there could be a couple of issues with the plan. One, the tax hike of course, and two, big business eating up all that government money and then getting nothing done. So joining me right now to explain why we need to keep big companies out of the infrastructure plan is a friend of Bold and the author of the book, Goliath. Welcome, Matt Stoller. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, so how have big companies like the consulting firm McKinsey gotten in the way of fulfilling big government promises in the past? Yeah, it's a great question. So in uh, the best example of infrastructure building infrastructure that we have is, is of late is Puerto Rico. In 2017, Hurricane Maria destroyed a bunch of Puerto Rico's electric grid and the government hired McKinsey, which is this consulting firm to say, okay, what are we gonna do about it? How are we gonna negotiate our debt? How are we gonna address these infrastructure problems? And what McKinsey did was spend a lot of time making sure that McKinsey got paid and not a lot of time making sure that everything got repaired. So now there are still power outages. There's still a lot of problems. Um, people threw the government out of office in 2019 and they're frustrated. And so the worry with this infrastructure plan is that it'll be like a supersized version of what happened in Puerto Rico, where the government will sort of deputize a private firm to say, yeah, here's how we want to spend the money, but it'll effectively, a lot of it will be stolen or misused. And that's what we've seen of, uh, you know, for the last 20 or 30 years. Yeah, and this was really uh, something from the Clinton era, according to your book, right? So how can Biden avoid these pitfalls and actually, you know, build this new infrastructure, which we, of course, need? Yeah, so America used to be really good at building public infrastructure. Um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did it in the, in the 30s, and then we, you know, in the 50s, the highway system, the space race, and all of these great things that we were able to do pretty well and, and, and cheaply. And we still can do some pretty awesome things, like the vaccine is a good example. Creating the vaccine is amazing. But in the 90s, Bill Clinton loosened a lot of the contracting rules and said, oh, okay, you can be a monopoly supplier of contracting, and we want all the contractors to merge, and we're going to take away power from government procurement officers to be hard-nosed negotiators. And because he loosened a lot of those rules, then, then he's, a lot of contractors, and led by firms like McKinsey, just started ripping everything off. And so the way that Biden can address it is by tightening contracting rules breaking up big firms so that there's competition when the government buys from them and really having the government act like what is called a power buyer. So using its buying power to drive good value for their money. Yeah, but a lot of the things that get floated now are public-private partnerships, right? We have this whole ethos of that we should, the government should be doing as little as possible and that private companies should be doing more. So are tax dollars the only way to get infrastructure built or do we need private partners as well? So yeah, so... Public-private partnership is sort of this catch-all term that means it can mean anything. It can mean, you know, the government puts in a little money and the private sector puts in some. It could mean the government hiring private firms to do things. You know, it could be the government buying pencils, right? That's a public-private partnership to help the government write. You know, they're buying pencils from a private company. So it's, it's kind of a catch-all term, but typically it means uh, private firms getting to sort of pillage what government money, you know, buy, you know help the government pays for a bridge a private entity ends up owning it and charging tolls and collecting those tolls. So that's generally a problem. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that the public interest is taken care of. And that means things like, you know, if you are gonna have private entities involved, which you always do, you know, you need to make sure that the government can look at their accounting books to make sure there aren't excess, you know, profits, which is what we did really from World War II up until the 1970s or so. You need to make sure that there's competition. So there are, you have multiple contractors bidding to drive down the price to make sure the quality is good and so on and so forth. But it's basically moving power back from these, from Wall Street, from private actors, institutions like McKinsey, this kind of like deep state of people that are, that are kind of pillaging and stealing money and back to the public sector itself. Yeah, but what about people who are skeptical of the public sector? Like, I'm a small government person. Like, I believe in, a, you know, that big government moves slowly. It's a lumbering beast. It's not very efficient. Our best and brightest don't go into government. So how do we find an appropriate solution that, you know, has buy-in from both the left and the right? Right. So it's it, the, the question isn't whether you're going to have big government or small government. Because, you know, when you, when you, what we, when we talk about large corporations that have market power, they are effectively governments. Um, they are just 
making political decisions in the boardroom where the public actually has no access. So what McKinsey was doing or what you know Goldman Sachs does or Google or any of these firms, they're exercising governing power. It's just that we the people have no say over it. And so really we're not talking about, we're talking about like how you wanna govern your society, whether we wanna have a democratic society or whether we wanna have sort of a financial oligarch government. So that's how I see the problem. And what we really need to do is restore capacity to the public sector, that means you know, making things a lot more equal. There's there's a, a much sort of broader frame, but it, but effectively making it so that you know if the government is going to bail out institutions, which they've been doing, or give political favors to institutions, that then those institutions have public obligations. That those institutions have to compete with other institutions, so that nobody has too much power. It's really about decentralizing power. It's not about whether you have a big government or not, because governance is just what we all do. And the the blurring the line between the public and private sector is pretty artificial in some ways. So you don't see this as a left or a right issue. You see this just as a general issue, then. Yeah, it's not a left right issue. I mean, Bill Clinton, you know, is a Democrat, but he was helped by Republicans at the time. And I think you know you saw that Obama did a lot of things that were really problematic. Like he spent a lot. He's he said we want to spend eleven billion dollars on high speed rail in California. That evaporated into the hands of consultants. And, you know, but the, but the Republicans love to loosen regulate rules on contractors. And they're, now both parties are changing back, right? So Biden is becoming a lot more, he wants, he's a throwback. He's, a, he's like, I want to be more like FDR, not Obama. And then the Republicans, for their own reasons, are starting to get mad at big business. So you're starting to see a change in our political culture. The, the people themselves are angry at Wall Street and at, at big business. They want things to work. They don't seem to be working. You have Boeing makes the 737 Max and so on and so forth. So there's this broad cultural and political change. And I think we we could just accelerate that and get people in Congress and get our elected officials and our citizens to be more aggressive about wanting a, a more democratic society. I think we can get back to the way that we used to do things when we used to, you know, go to the moon and build the computer industry and so on and so forth. Well, that's really good news, Matt. Hopefully that comes true. So thank you for your time. Thanks a lot. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and much more at Bull TV on most social media networks. I'm David Grasso. Have a great day.